Hi guys. So it's been a while since our last video and we've been saying the same thing in every video lately and that's because this last year and a half has brought its fair share of challenges. Challenges in just about every area of life. Challenges that have often left us mentally and emotionally drained and so we have been focusing on self-care which is something that we neglected to do for a very long time because for us Fighting for the animals has always taken precedence. We did realize that if we don't take care of ourselves, we are less effective at taking care of others. So there does need to be a balance. Moving forward, of course, we will continue to fight for the animals in whatever capacity we can, and we will continue to make content for them and for you. We are starting off this video with some very sad news. Beautiful Sweet Jackie passed away a couple of weeks ago after a sudden and unexpected turn in her health. So we have been mourning her. Uh, she lost weight very quickly as she began to lose her appetite and become lethargic along with a couple of other symptoms. We took her to the ER one night for treatment which included IV fluids and oxygen. Then we transferred her to a different specialty hospital the next day where we made the difficult decision to hospitalize her for a period of three days. We really had hoped that she would pull through, but she passed away after the first day. It seems to us, and the doctors suspect, that this may have been something chronic that she had been carrying with her for several months, uh, possibly her entire life. Aside from the scoliosis she was diagnosed with, or perhaps even a cause of her scoliosis. Yet, despite the x-rays, blood work, CT scan, the fecals, the viral exams, and the numerous visits to every avian exotic specialist in town, which now comes to nine different doctors, we're still not sure what she had. This entire journey, as beautiful as it was, was also extremely frustrating and exhausting to get all of these tests and still not have any answers. So we decided to submit her body for a necropsy, and it could very well be that we still won't have an answer, but at least we can say we tried absolutely everything, right? And if we do get an answer, we can learn from it, and it can help us heal and get some closure. So yeah, we lost our Jackie only a few months after Fireroo passed away, so it's been a lot. Um, please keep Jackie in your thoughts and thank you all for your years of support, Patreon contributions and Etsy purchases which allowed us to give her the best care we could. We'll be paying off Jackie's ER and hospitalization for a while, so know that that is where your donations are going. We'd like to segue into today's topic now, which is empathy. So, for example, in the past when we have announced the death of one of our animal companions, we have, unsurprisingly, received insensitive comments on YouTube. Like, it was just a chicken. Or, are you gonna eat it now? Or, it was gonna die anyway, you should have left it on the slaughter truck. And a very common one, generally directed at me, you should just have kids. And mostly coming from other women. <laughs> Granted, our in-person circle of friends, those whom we are close to, those who love our animals as much as we do, would never say something like that. We believe even most strangers wouldn't say that to our faces. But online, it's easier to hide behind a veil of anonymity. Still, this lack of empathy runs rampant in society in general. Even within our circles, we are careful to choose who we talk to about certain things based on how safe we feel being vulnerable with them. Because not everyone gets it. And that's what we want to discuss today. So do vegans have more empathy? Or are empathetic people more likely to be vegan? First off, what is empathy? Merriam-Webster defines empathy as the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experience of another, of either the past or present, without having the feelings, thoughts, and experience fully communicated in an objectively explicit manner. And the Cambridge Dictionary defines empathy as the ability to share someone else's feelings or experiences by imagining what it would be like to be in that person's situation. Basically, empathy is the ability to understand or share the feelings of others. 
Ironically, some of the all too common accusations made towards vegans are you vegans think you're so superior or you vegans think you're so much better or you vegans think you're the moral authority. Being better than others is often used as a vegan slur, but isn't empathy the thing that causes one to care about others? Vegans believe no living being should be harmed needlessly for taste pleasure. Non-vegans believe that other living beings can and should be harmed needlessly for taste pleasure. So who is thinking they are superior in this scenario? Who is being more empathetic? Perhaps carnists are actually irritated at vegans' empathy rather than their sense of superiority. It may just be that the reason why many non-vegans get irritated at vegans for being more empathetic is because they are. A small but interesting study from 2010 titled The Brain Functional Networks Associated to Human and Animal Suffering Differ Among Omnivores, Vegetarians, and Vegans, linked below, shows that vegans and vegetarians display more empathy in their neural activity than meat eaters. Following an initial evaluation, participants in the study were shown a variety of images depicting both human and animal suffering, as well as natural landscapes, which were considered neutral imagery. Participants were connected to an MRI machine during this process to read their neural activity. Researchers discovered some interesting things from these brain scans. Yeah, Faunalytics released a 2019 article about the study and its findings. I quote, Compared to the group of omnivores, both vegans and vegetarians showed a notably higher engagement of empathy-related brain regions when shown images of suffering, whether they included animals or humans. In other words, vegans demonstrated stronger empathetic reactions. Quote, Further, vegans showed an even stronger engagement of empathy when viewing images of animal suffering. In these instances, more regions of the brain were activated. Interestingly, these activated brain regions are ones thought to be associated with representation of self, self-values, memory, and visuospatial processing suggesting that vegans see the suffering of animals as related to their sense of self. So meat eaters showed less empathy as their brain responses to animal suffering indicated in the study, and unsurprisingly, vegans and vegetarians showed more empathy. That only makes sense given that veganism is an ethical lifestyle and is rooted in empathy. Although vegetarians' motivation to be vegetarian varies, in this particular study, the motivation that vegetarians cited was ethics. Their higher levels of empathetic response could be likely why they chose to be vegetarian in the first place and why they might find it easier than non-vegans to eventually transition to veganism. However, as we've discussed many times, vegetarians definitively cause animal suffering by consuming dairy and eggs and sometimes fish depending on the vegetarian, but that's its own video, linked below. But often, vegetarians who were unaware and are made aware have an easier time transitioning to veganism because they are already empathetic. There is still hope for meat eaters. After all, we were both once meat eaters, as were the vast majority of vegans. It seems that empathy can either come naturally or be learned or acquired. In fact, based on our research, it seems that empathy has a genetic component and a social component, meaning a person's personality traits can influence their ability to be empathetic and also how they are socialized as children. It could very well be that empathy existed in every pre-vegan and when they were made aware of how their actions conflicted with their values, they were more likely to become vegan due to their natural empathy. It could also be the case that empathy exists to a certain degree in nearly all of us. And there are those who choose to act on it and live vegan, and those who choose to continue to needlessly harm animals and thus ignore their natural empathy. Being empathetic requires being okay with being vulnerable, to take responsibility for one's actions. And it takes a strong sense of self to do that. Some people find it challenging. Add in a lifetime of social conditioning that some animals matter, others do not. And that's a superb recipe for the opposite of empathy, which is apathy. 
or indifference. Finally, there are those who lack empathy altogether. But even if an adult lacks empathy, it is something that can be practiced and developed through various exercises and therapy. So next time you're engaged in a very frustrating discussion with a non-vegan and they tell you that they just don't care about animals in the variety of ways that that can be expressed. They could be being intellectually dishonest in order to shirk responsibility, or it's very likely that they are incapable of caring. Empathy is ultimately rooted in emotional intelligence, which can vary among people depending on many factors, including uh, childhood trauma or neglect. It's not uncommon that you find yourself in an eternal loop of trying to explain animal suffering only to have the other person gaslight you, minimize and invalidate the importance of the issue by saying insensitive things like, cows don't directly die from being milked, so it's not my fault that they die, or you're being oversensitive, or they're just animals. Ultimately, you can't force someone to understand anything if they are incapable or unwilling to do so. You can't force someone to take an action that they don't want to take. Hence the whole, you're forcing your beliefs down people's throats is moot. So perhaps then, the next step for you when you find yourself in a situation like this is to just move on to someone who is empathetic. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. But I know we can't end this video without Tony. You want to see Tony? We need a Tony. We boy. need a Tony. We've we been giving a... Tony lots of extra TLC because he misses Jacqueline. As, as you know from our previously released video. We've just been, we've been a little sad. Mm. Tony does not like to be by himself. No. Who does? Who does? We all like to have others that care about us. Chickens are social animals. We didn't, we never leave Tony alone now. No. The location for him is not nearly as important as who's in the location. Yeah. So yes, he does like to go outside and forage through the yard and peck in the dirt and eat the rosemary and do all sorts of chicken things but if he's left out there alone he'll just walk straight to the back door and want to be <laughs> let back in the house it's too hot out anyway it's very hot and you're a northeastern time. chicken breed mm -hmm. northeastern chicken, chicken we once again want to thank every single one of our patreon patrons you can keep going <laughs> just just yes and i'm just removing lint from your Sorry. beard <laughs> We once again want to say a huge, huge thank you to all of our Patreon patrons. You guys support Tony, you've supported Jackie and all of her medical care, and all of those donations are still going towards our Animal Rescue Fund. We're going to be paying off Jackie's ER visit, her hospitalization, and we're going to be paying for Tony's we're care. We're still paying off the CT scan, yeah. actually, from several months so, ago. Yeah, from a while back. So um, every single dollar you donate on Patreon, as well as all of the purchases made on Etsy. We have an Etsy store, we have lots of stickers, we have pins, we have some shirts left. That gives you a little little vegan activism swag and that gives, that gives Tony a little something in the Animal Rescue Fund as well. Thank you so much to everyone who has contributed. If you like our channel, if you like our videos, you get value out of our content and you wanna become a Patreon patron, the link is in the description below. And Tony and I fall asleep like this on the couch sometimes. Oh, did you just peck at my microphone? Hey, hey, hey. That's a microphone. That's a microphone. Check it. He always has to check things. What is this? <laughs> we have a mirror. Look at that handsome boy. <laughs> Tony loves his mirror. Yeah. Don't you love your mirror, my boy? Oh, I did. Is that you? Who's there? Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you too. We will stop. <laughs>